artist. This is Kim from CustomDollBaby.com. Joining me today is the beautiful Miss Christina. Christina I, is the first reborn doll I ever created from the Pumpkin by Donna Ruver starter kit. She taught me so much of what I know today about reborning and she's going to help me with my demonstration today as well. In my last video on paint sealing and skin texturing, I kept referring to a magical goop known as the secret sauce. Today I want to talk about the recipe for my secret sauce, as well as the principles behind the ingredients in the secret sauce. And that way, as you are experimenting with this and trying to make it your own, you'll be able to balance the ingredients to create the look and the effect and the textures that you want on your baby doll. Like every good student of Bountiful Baby, I was taught the way to seal the paint was to take the heat set matte varnish, get your cosmetic wedge, dip it right into the varnish and slather that stuff directly onto the doll. And as a result, as we saw, as we can see on Christina, we get some crusty, crunchy stuff from the matte varnish where it has been over applied. It turns out that in the Genesis Heat Set Universe, you actually have a whole arsenal of things that you can use to seal your painting. Another popular option in addition to the heat set varnish, matte varnish, is the satin varnish, which gives kind of a smooth satiny texture to it, as well as the mediums of the thinning medium and the thick medium, which you may be using to spread your painting or your shading or to put together your three-dimensional eyebrows. So any combination of these things can make an excellent secret sauce for your doll. I'm a little on the lazy side, so I actually only use these two. Here are the four key ingredients for my secret sauce. The first is the heat set matte varnish. The purpose of the matte varnish is to remove any shine that's on your doll as well as to create a soft baby powder skin texture on the doll. The matting effect is very, very pretty on the doll and I really love adding that to my sealing and skin texturing layer. The second ingredient is the thinning medium. So as you know, matte varnish has a tendency to turn white and get crunchy and crusty and nasty when it's been over applied to an area. The purpose of the thinning medium in concert with some odorless paint thinner is to dilute the matte varnish so that you can avoid over application of the varnish to the doll therefore avoiding the crunchy, crusty, nasty, ashy stuff that you get when there's too much matte varnish on the doll. So the thinning medium is there to give you a smooth, diluted, and even application of the matte varnish. The last two ingredients are actually for pigmentation. The first is a flesh color. Depending on the complexion of your doll, you will use a different flesh color. For a Caucasian baby, maybe you'll use a peachy flesh 08. For an African American baby, maybe flesh 02, flesh 03. Use whatever you use to paint the flesh on the doll because the purpose of this is to make sure that your varnish layer is doll colored, not white. So we're trying to pigment that last layer so it blends in with all the rest of your painting as opposed to sitting on top of it as its own colored layer. We want it to mix in well. The last ingredient is the warm blush. The warm blush is to warm up the flesh color so that your texture blends with all the areas of the doll. So if you have a nice rosy kneecap and you throw some flesh 08 colored varnish on top of that, it's going to take away from the blushing that you did. It's going to distract from that rosiness. So adding just enough of your blushing color, whatever you use to blush the doll, 
to the varnish gives you a nice even tone that looks gorgeous over the not blushed areas, it looks gorgeous over the blushed areas. It really evens out the complexion of the doll and it's just gorgeous when it's all put together. Okay, so now that we've gathered our ingredients, we're ready to create our sauce. So make sure that you have a container that you can enclose. Actually, Dolls by Sandy, if you buy anything from her, you can get up to two empty Genesis jars, which is super useful. Or you can grab some empty jars from a craft store. Make sure you can close the lid or screw it down. Um, then make sure you can trap in the moisture so it won't dry out when you're not using it. Um, one thing that's critical with this, as I kept saying in the other video, is this stuff turns into something else when it dries. So you really want to make sure that you don't let it dry. So for my recipe, when I'm doing a thin coat of varnish, just to take the shine off the doll and to add a very fine skin texture, I do about a 50-50 mix of the thinning medium and the matte varnish. And I use my Older List Paint Thinner to give it a little bit more um, mixability. We all love Bob Ross for this. Um, nice greasy paint thinner that works really well with the Genesis. So, scoop out a little bit of the thinning medium. Oops, I'm just gonna dig right on in there and get out some of this matte varnish. And that's a piece that I'm curing. Letting me know that it's done. Okay. So that's about a 50 50 mix. And then I'm going to add a little bit of odorless paint thinner to smear that around. Start with just a few drops just to give it enough moisture to be stirrable. If that's a word. I'm not sure that it is. Okay, so as you see, I have kind of a gelatinous, creamy cream here. I want it a little more diluted than that, so I'm going to add a little more paint thinner. Just a few more drops. It's not runny, right? This isn't going to be something I can pour out of the jar. If it becomes that, I need to add more matte varnish to it. But it is something that needs to be movable and smoothable, which also may not be a word. Okay, but you can kind of see through that. It's not too white, not too chalky. So you can keep adding thinning medium and matte varnish to your heart's content. Um, sometimes I'll put more matte varnish than medium because maybe the doll's a little shiny and I'm trying to counteract that. So it's like making chili, right? You know, you just keep tasting it until you get it the way you want it, but don't stick this in your mouth, this grips. So the flesh tone then counteracts the tendency of the matte varnish to turn white. So if there is a color, and this is really critical for any t severe texturing that you're doing, if you're doing pimples or if you want a lot of big bumps on your doll, you want it to be highly, highly pigmented because you want those bumps to be the color of the doll, not the color of the varnish. Okay, so I've created a pretty opaque flesh color in this mixture. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the blush tint to it. And that has the effect of not whitening up your doll or not distracting from the blushing that you've already done. So I'm going to add just enough blush to make it look just right. So this is going to be a very peachy, rosy color. Okay, so now I have that peachy, reddish peach mixture and you really like I said it's like chili you want to get it to your taste so if you want it more red if you want it more fleshy if you want it more whatever just keep fine-tuning it until it looks the way you want it to look so because I don't have any dolls that are in need of sealing or texturing at this time I'm demonstrating on a test limb and I really just want to quickly emphasize the importance of having test limbs especially when you're doing the sealant. I don't care how many times I make this stuff or how confident I am that it's gonna work. I always, always, always put it on a test limb before I put it on my finished piece. So I'm taking this off of the um, plate and applying it to this little foot here. 
This foot is not painted, so you're gonna see the color that we made coming through, as well as the texture that we're creating. So that's a nice little texture, a nice satiny texture, even though this isn't the satin varnish that we're doing. And then for the more opaque, highly textured, pimply texture, you know, remember we don't apply it to the plate, we go directly to the doll, we get our wonderful spouncer and we spounce our texture onto the piece. And then you get an even more bumpy look on the doll. You can spread this as far as you want to spread it. But you won't be putting on a thicker coat of the secret sauce in order to get this effect. I hope this demonstration was helpful for you. As I mentioned, it's not necessarily the correct way to do it. It definitely isn't the only way to do it, but I hope you give it a try, continue to experiment, throw some satin varnish in there, get some thick medium in there, just keep playing around with it till you get it exactly the way you want it to look on your baby doll. Then come back, share with us what you've learned so we can all get better together. Until next time, bye. <laughs>